Okay, continuing differential analysis, uh, and we're going to talk about a make or buy decision. A make or buy decision. So in this case, uh, when a company is involved in more than one activity in the value chain, it is vertically integrated. The decision to carry out one of the activities in the chain internally rather than to buy externally from a supplier is called a make or buy decision. And when we think about this, we can think about, does McDonald's buy its uh, french fries or does it make its french fries? It makes french fries, does it buy its potatoes or does it grow its t potatoes? Ah, it doesn't grow its potatoes, it buys its potatoes. Could they put out fields and uh, make potatoes? They could, but they don't, they buy potatoes. So you can see that you could vertically integrate your business to a very uh, great depth if you chose to. But the question is, should you? The question is how much profit would you make or lose doing such a thing? So we think of vertical integration, the advantages are a smoother flow of uh, parts and material, better quality, and of course you can realize more profits because you're making profits as you uh, vertically integrate. So it's a little, it should be a little bit less expensive, but it's also not the easiest thing in the world to do. Some disadvantages are that companies may have failed to take advantage of suppliers who can create economies of scale by pooling demand from numerous companies. And while economies of scale can be appealing, a company must be careful to retain control of the activities that are essential in maintaining its competitive uh, position. So in some cases, you want to control because that's where you value add. And in other cases, you know, like growing potatoes, I'm not exactly sure you're value adding a lot there. You're certainly uh, turning, turning a potato into McDonald's french fries uh, is pretty, uh, pretty good value add to me. I think their fries are pretty good. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with their hamburgers. They're clearly not value adding there. That's my personal opinion. Okay, so when we do this, we have an example. Uh, we're going to buy, make or buy decision. The Essex company manufactures part 4A that is used on one of its products. And we've got costs here of 9513210. You can see that it's a unit pr cost of $30. So now the question is, can we get an offer from a supplier to make the same product? And we, lo and behold, uh, we look for an offer and we find that the there's a few factors. One is the special equipment used to manufacture this part has no resale value. Uh, second one is the total amount of the general factory overhead, which is allocated on the basis of direct labor hours, would be unaffected by this decision. In other words, in the second bullet point here, we uh, allocate the general over overhead into hours used. And if we use fewer hours, then the overhead goes up on everything else. So the overhead is still going to be the overhead. We can't avoid that. The third bullet says the $30 unit cost is based on 20,000 parts produced each year, and we have an outside supplier who's offered to provide us 20,000 parts at a cost of $25 per part should we accept the offer. Well, clearly $30 of our cost on our books is $30 and $25 for their cost. It would be obvious, well, of course we would buy it at $25. Not so fast. Let's do the analysis in a differential way. We're looking for differential analysis here. So if we look at the math, we have a cost per unit of uh, $25 for an outside purchase price, 20,000 units. The buy price, shown in green here, is $500,000. The make price, we have direct materials, 9, direct labor, 5, variable overhead, 1. So 180 um or 180 plus 100 plus 200 uh, all add up to um, $300,000. And then the de depreciation of equipment. Well, we don't have depreciation of equipment. The depreciation of the equipment or the equipment itself, because there's no salvage value, is a sunk cost. So it would just we would just give it away or junk it. And so when we think about the differential analysis here, that it's already sunk cost, it doesn't matter, it's not important to the decision, we already spent the money. So we don't count that at all. Uh, beyond that, the supervised salary, obviously that's going to be something uh, that would be a cost. And then the Jowin Rail Factory overhead, we don't count that as our cost either because we're not going to get rid of the General Factory overhead if we buy the part or we make the part. It's still going to be the General Factory overhead. So that doesn't include our cost either. So when you get down to the bottom of this, you've got $340,000 to make it. You have $500,000 to buy it. The avoidable costs... Um, associated with Part 4A, direct material, direct labor, variable overhead, and supervisor salary are the only costs that are relevant to the decision. They are traced directly to that part. Everything else, we're going to have it no matter what. 
And if you tie this back into the student that was going from New York to Boston, you know, the, uh, for example, her car insurance wasn't going to change. So the thing, the depreciation of this uh, equipment or the use of this equipment, it's already sunk cost. It's not going to change. It's like paying your car insurance and then deciding whether you're going to take the train or the car. The car insurance isn't relevant to the decision. And in this case, the equipment isn't relevant to the decision. In addition to that, the general factory overhead, we're going to pay that anyway. That's like paying your car insurance or uh, uh, the other things that are involved. However, other things are involved. Direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, and the supervisor's salary, all those are involved. So we should, what should we do here? Yes, you're right. We should keep making the part, even though we think it's worth $30, they're charging us $25. The reason we came up with $30 is because we put all these other costs into the part, but they're not directly related to the part. If we got rid of the part, we'd still have some of those costs. And that adds, that either subtracts from the cost one way, or you could just take those costs and put it onto the part and say, oh, that part's way more expensive because if the part had factory overhead and the part had depreciation on the equipment, then of course it would be more expensive than $30. So either way you want to look at it, you will decide that you don't want this part, uh, you want to make this part and you don't want to buy the supplier's part. Um, so in final uh, summary here, uh, should we make part uh, 4A, uh, given that the total avoidable costs are less than buying the part, Essex should continue to make the part. So yes, 340000 is less than 500000 If you associate the correct costs to this decision, you will find out that you have a, a wise decision to keep making the part. Remember, relevant costs traceable specific to a product are important. Other costs, we avoid them. They're not part of the decision. That's why it's differential decision making. Let's go on with another one.